I really don't remember this picture. You don't remember it? No, don't remember getting it took like, but I'll just know Father Wilson and my two friends, Ms. Cecile and Eileen McClary. I can't delay it. <laughs> Mark Cutley. <laughs> I loved it then. So, and I still live in Spring Hill now, and it's totally, totally changed. We still attend Father Wilson's um, school. We do, I done maths and English in his school, and he, he's great, great man, like he is. I'm the one in the middle. It's hilarious. <laughs> it's fun. I have no memories of it at all, to be honest. No, no. I remember, I remember Mary's shop. I remember the area, but don't remember the photograph being taken. That's all. You know, when you grew up in Spring Hill, it was all a fair good. Everybody looked stick together. Everybody was. Everybody looked after each other. That's the way Spring Hill was. Mm -hmm. Well, it's sort of overwhelmed, really. I mean, I like the whole exhibition very much, and I'm a great admirer of Bill Kirk, and uh, we've known each other on and off for a long time. And uh, he came uh, was that many years ago. <laughs>
It was the first city accordion band, but before that they were known as the Land Tamers. So has its memories because the band, since a lot of the family members have all gone now, my uncles, my dad, and even some of my cousins when they were young, they're, they're sadly not with us anymore, you know. But it's nice to reflect and look back on that, you know, say, yes, that was a part of my life that I was proud of and happy. Uh, June Hutchinson sitting on a wall in Sandy Row with an accordion, which is a fantastic image in itself, you know. Um, and, uh, you know, you look at that and you would have, I mean, what would your guess be about where that person, who that, you know, who that woman is now? Um, you know, and who she is this evening, you know? Uh, there she is, there's a photograph of her with uh, family, you know, holding a baby on her lap. Um, but, you know, it's just, there's something about that I think that is just um, extraordinary. It's, it, it, this is my first time seeing some of the photographs. It's, it's, uh, it's the beginning of something, I think that's the other thing. You know, the, what, what, what you got with Bill's photographs the first time around was um, uh, a story of where a city was at at a particular moment. And now what we've got is we've got three decades of moments to catch up on. Um, and, and that's going to be, I think, it's, I think it's a really, really significant undertaking uh, coming. There were three. There are three young girls in a photograph with Des, with Father Des Wilson, and and I just stood with them in front of the picture, and they just told me the story of the street, that as it was then, what's changed about. They're showing me photographs about the houses now. They're able to tell me the names of the people on the walls. It's amazing. That's one photograph, and of course, there's a book full of them in the images of Belfast. When I found myself at this scene, it caused me, it caused me to have goose pimples. I was like knocked back on my heels. I couldn't believe this. I recognized it instantly as something very special. I was, I was privileged to actually encounter it. He's tending the seating heads of these apparently Amazon. They come from the Amazon plants and so that was his job he was he was in the process of tending these hello i'm claire archibald terry hoodie's partner we clicked and then we started going out never knew about good vibrations, teenage kicks, nothing before we started going out. And now I'm looking at this picture when he, in 1983, and what a handsome, handsome young man he is. Well, he loves his younger self, obviously, everyone would. And he loved looking at the mantelpiece, uh, old friends, um, and the fact that he met Bob Dylan once, and Bob Dylan told him to F-U-C-K away off and never speak to me again. Um, and he likes this picture because that's him now, and he's still doing the whole record thing, even if it's only part-time. It doesn't fit into the um, neat little set, you know. Um, it's a Belfast thing of ignoring what's in front of you and uh, preferring the uh, intimate distractions. Uh, it's what he wrote about is <coughs> a lot of people were sort of happy to let it waft by, um, not fake, you know, um, fake was there to deal with the issue, you know. 
why. Yeah, he, 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 Joe came up to us a number of times, but on this one particular occasion, I remember very especially, because we were talking about how the poet would actually get into the heart of things in a way that nobody else could. And that was why people were afraid of the poet and afraid of the poetry. Every time I think of, of his poetry, I think of one image, and that is of broken glass. Because there's that sharpness and agony in a sense. And yet, uh, people were going through life in a way that they were capable of actually sustaining life in the midst of all that uh, sharpness and uh, cruelty, really. And one big thing about, about him that uh, he did uh, attract a tremendous amount of, I, I wouldn't say just admiration, but actually love. I mean, people who were prepared to look after him and, and just, um, make sure he was all right. And, and no matter whatever happened, to come out the other end and say, how are you, Joe? You know, so all that was wonderful. The do, you, do you mean as a photographic subject? Well, he was quite easy. Uh, at the very time of the book launch, he, he, he accused me of making him very glum, <laughs> which I think he's possibly forgotten. This was in the city hall at the launch of Images of Belfast, and he says, why did you make me look so glum? <laughs> but now, looking backwards at it, it's sort of entertaining. Joe Connor, whose pseudonym is, is Podrick Fake, and uh, in the first picture, uh, uh, Joe was always outspoken and independent and uh, slightly inebriated often. Uh, and what I loved about him was that he was badly behaved and mischievous. But he is, in his way, the spirit of poetry, the soul of poetry. That's a great tribute to uh, Yeah, I suppose so. That's what I feel. I just get a feel that I've done enough. Very often yeah. it, it comes to that. I know. That I may... I'm hoping and crossing my fingers that I have succeeded. But it's not for certain when I walk away. Yeah. Until I look at my negatives, or in this case, the monitor. When the eyes, when the eyes look, there's a certain feel to them that they're not strained. It's when I like it. When they're they're at their ease with with the with the viewer, basically. Yes. That's what I like. Whenever. Yeah.